Namaste and welcome to another episode of the Influence Academy with myself Anusha brought to you by Extra Tech and 3 Bs Education and Migration. The motive of our show is to bloom inspiration and help our viewers to execute on their dreams. Among 51,000 Nepali students here in Australia, the majority of them choose account as their subject. I hope this episode will help all the students who are looking forward to start their career as an accountant. In today's episode, I am accompanied by such a personality who is highly versatile and qualified finance professional with CPA qualification, with more than a decade long experience in the field of finance and accounting, who is also a teacher and volunteers as a national treasurer in non-resident Nepal Association Australia. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome Mr. Anil Pokhrel. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. How are you? Very well. Yourself? Good. Thank you for asking. Before we start, I would like to congratulate you on becoming a father of two lovely children. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you. How, how does it feel? It's an amazing feeling, especially when I get to hold those twin daughters. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to express that in the word, but it's, it's a divine feeling. So it's like a perfect, we already had a baby boy okay. um, who is turning two in a couple of weeks time. And, mm-hmm. and we're blessed with two lovely daughters and it's like a perfect family so it's pretty amazing yeah, pretty amazing the ability to use uh, one's time effectively or productively is the greatest challenge that the student face here in australia what mantras or techniques did you use for such efficient time management uh, to be in the position that you're right now it's a very uh, timely and valid question i think um not only as a student but uh, for everyone uh, time management is a critical thing we all have 24 hours in a day and it's all about how you manage your time mm-hmm. the first tip what i find out is prioritizing the work prioritizing. so mm-hmm. prioritizing the work is very important so that will help us um, to figure out what is the most important task and that what can have a significant impact in the results and then that way you will uh, in the spectrum, you'll put the less prioritized tasks at the bottom. So if you're going to miss it, you know, the less damaging things will be missed out and will, it'll move to the next day. So that, that's a key thing. Beside that, I would say um, having good interpersonal skills, um, maintaining the good network among the persons and having a progressive thoughts. These are the other key things that I think you need to have as an individual mm-hmm. to manage those things. What are the techniques that you use for time management? Not only if it time management, like as, as a student, as international students who are working and then uh, obviously meeting the academic um, expectations, you know, you're going uni, doing assignments, preparing for exams and having that aspiration. Once I complete my study, I want to go in my professional field and take my career to another level. So all of these things, uh, obviously, you need to be a discipline. Um, you need to think in a positive way, like, you know, and you need to have that sort of right network and, and a right skill set within you. So when people were partying and, and, and going outside and things like that, I was spending my time enhancing the, you know, simple skills like Excel skills okay. and, and, and Microsoft skills and, mm-hmm. and, and preparing myself in the YouTube, like, you know, how to skill and uh, how to enhance your interview skills and things mm-hmm. like that. So that, that does make an impact in the long run. And, and as a beginner, when you uh, when you, you were um, looking to find a career uh, in the relevant field mm-hmm. as an international student without local experience, it's always challenge. So, um, what I found out in Australia is having good reference and and that right network mm-hmm. and does help to and get along those things. So, going back to your question about the time management, it's all about. Um, putting yourself in the discipline. That is, you want to do lots of things, but do what you need to do. I'm not saying do not party, do not go out with friends, do all of those things, but prioritize what is important and what will have the long-term impact in your career. Well said. Pleasure in the job put perfection in the work. That's right. Yeah. When we are passionate about what we do, we consistently look for better ways to improve ourselves. So tell us your story, your passion with accounting and how did and where did it all start? Well, Anissa, I'll be honest with you. So um, in my life, firstly, I've, I never thought I would be an accountant, right? Um, back home, I, I was from a science background mm-hmm. uh, with, you know, all Nepalese household dream of going in medicine and then, and, you know, all those sort of things. But 
uh, I tried and, and somehow I, I narrowly missed out from the scholarship and, mm -hmm. and, and when I came to Australia and there was very few people to advise on how to take my career okay. and uh, these days the guys there they are lucky because the elders, the seniors, you know, they are in well position now. They can give us advice and guide to the right direction. But back in 2006, six, seven, there were very few people whom we can go approach and ask those sort of things. And when, and we're really young to make critical decisions, you know. So in that um, scenarios, um, whatever we look around with it, okay, let's. I'm good at maths, so why not accounting? So that that was first trigger point for me, and. Okay. And I went there, and I'm not. I'm not regretting. I, I enjoy what I'm doing right now. But what I was saying is, originally it was never the plan to be an accountant. But the key thing here is, when you decide to do something, do that properly. You know, me myself, without being from the accounting background, I when I started accounting in Australia, I don't know what David Credit is because I was from biology, okay. and then I had no knowledge of you know uh, that's key typical accounting words, but. When I went to uni in first few semesters, I did a struggle. Uh, it's not, I was not getting good marks, but I wasn't um, getting a good understanding of those accounting insights. But I spent more time in libraries. I, I tried to uh, have those interactive sessions with my tutors and lectures, and then I, I upheld them. And, and by the end of um, you know university, I was one of the finest students, having good grades and and and, and, and I passed with nice numbers. You know, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, when you start a career, be disciplined, um, do whatever you do from you know from the bottom of your heart, not just like you know you want to go, you know, get it over and done, and you're going to get university degree, try to learn things, and that will help you to excel your skills. So once I complete my university, uh, I want to. Like, you know, it, it was again a challenge to land in the professional job. Mm -hmm. So I used to work for retail and, and this could be a very good um, tips for those students out there who want to have this professional career in accounting. Uh, accounting is such an amazing job. Wherever there's financial transaction, you need an accountant. Yeah. So accounting is one of the most stable job, yeah. despite of all the difficulties, because everywhere you go, you need an accountant. Mm -hmm. Okay. so. I was working in a retail and once I was graduated, I want to go to the grad role, right? And uh, obviously we know that it's sort of a paradox in Australia, without PR you don't get a proper job, yep. without having that proper job you, you don't get the enough you know, points or you cannot justify you to get a PR, you yep. know, you know. Out of those paradoxical situations, I use that my network, I use my reference of working managers and obviously I tried my best, I went to the interview, I've gone through the process but it did help. So. Again, the tips for the students is try to, wherever you work, you're probably working in nursing home as assistant in nursing, or you're working in retail like Coles and Woolworth, who are giant, and we've got a big finance team back in the you know corporate houses. Yeah. So you can use that um, as your stepping tools to the professional career, and you can excel and enhance from there. As you mentioned, Adam, there are many students who have recently graduated in accounting. And if a recent graduate wants to apply for a job as an accountant, what are the steps they should take? I can completely understand uh, how a student feels and, and, and being an international student, especially in Australia, everyone is asking for local experience, how challenging is it, but it is possible. I've seen uh, lots of people um, getting into it. Once you are in, uh, it's always you know, upward, so you don't have to look behind. But getting that first role is very critical. So a few tips what I would um, think will be critical for those students out there is when you are there doing the uh, university course or uh, when you're doing a professional year, you know, internships comes with you. Don't use that internship just for the sake of internship. Make most of it. Okay. I've seen people who have been to the internship, who build that relationship with the managers or supervisors. I can see a three outcome. First outcome, if you do well, you'll find job there, you'll stay there. If you, even if you do well and there is no job, you can still have local referencing, which is key for any roles to move ahead. Mm -hmm. And third thing is you just go there for the sake of going and, and you don't get out of there. You just go there because you're going to have five points and you can apply for PR. So don't think in that mentality. You should be thinking in those first two mentalities. First, trying to get job there. Mm -hmm. Second thing is trying to get that local experience. That's pretty critical. Once you have that um, 
uh, whenever you go to the jobs, mm -hmm. um, you, with the resumes, mm -hmm. having a local experience is pretty critical and mm -hmm. having that local reference is very important. So when you're leaving um, your uh, internship, mm -hmm. go in and speak to your supervisor or manager saying, thank you for the opportunity. I had a great time, great session. I truly enjoyed working with you. If there are any roles in the future, please do contact me. I'm keen to be a part of the organization. Mm -hmm. And I am going to look for the roles out there. And I, do you mind if I put you as my reference? Mm -hmm. Build that relationship with them. And, then, and that'll, that will be a very uh, important uh, thing. And other thing I, what I want to tell is um, you need to spend qualitative time maintaining your resume, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So unless you have a, a very good resume, you won't be picked up for the role, okay? So critical thing is um, do research, do not write lengthy resumes. Mm -hmm. You know, these days people are very time efficient. Mm -hmm. and, and don't make, there is a generic resume, but do not use same resume for all the roles. Mm -hmm. You need to go and look at the job description and change the resume accordingly. Mm -hmm. I know 80 person will be the same thing, but 20% you need to always play around looking at the job description. That's what you need to do. But the problem with lots of people from our context or from our uh, background is they tend to maintain one resume for uh, 20 jobs mm -hmm. and, 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 and you won't be picked up because these days hats are they are busy and when they advertise a role there are 500 600 resumes and they filter by keywords mm -hmm. so if your resume is missing that keyword you mm -hmm. never be picked up mm -hmm. because i've been part of those recruitment and i do filter those resumes and mm -hmm. and and what i've done is like you know when there is a time constraint mm -hmm. i didn't have time to go through all the resume we try to filter out if i'm recruiting some project relating role i'm gonna look at those keywords and try to filter those out so it is very important for the students to spend time mm -hmm. immaculating your resume. That's mm -hmm. another thing. So as a graduate, first thing is always a reference and your network. You use your reference and network. That's the first easy way to get the job. Mm -hmm. and, and lots of people land that way. And once you land a job, it's all about how you perform well, how you develop and you move on and on. Secondly is uh, if you don't have that privilege of getting, you know, referrals and then those sort of additional help from your seniors or friends and family circle, uh, please do get internship have that relationship with the managers and get the local experience and and get registered with the um, recruitment agencies. They do help you, they do help you. And and those recruitment agencies, even, you know, short term roles, even if it's for a couple of months or just for a few weeks, mm -hmm. just get it if it's first job because mm -hmm. it will make a difference. And other thing that I wanna say with you, Anisha, is <clears throat> These days, lots of us who are coming from overseas, we have got those financial responsibilities yeah. and we are working somewhere and we're making a decent money. Yeah. So for example, if you're working somewhere in decent money and we are in the verge of uh, changing our career, like you know, as an accountant, or as, as a, when I started my accounting career 10 years ago, how much money I made, yeah. um, it was very less than what my friends used to make. Okay. Things have changed now, but what I'm saying at those stages is I had to risk leaving what I used to make working in the retail or the industry, mm -hmm. and I had to go back to that career, sacrificing uh, temporarily thinking it will be better for the, in the long term, you long know? Term. So you need to make those sort of critical decisions. And and other thing is, as an international student, it's quite important to enhance your communication skills and, and, and all those sort of interpersonal skills. So lots of people, we work in um, kitchen or, you know, even, even a cleaning job, facility management job, which is amazing as a student. I've done that in the past and, and I'm very proud of it because it helps me for the time management mm -hmm. and uh, it is, you know, working on your one, there's less pressure, even you're tired, you can manage your work and, mm -hmm. and it does good one, it helps to pay your bills and university fees and things like that. Mm -hmm. But do get involved in customer facing roles, customer. even even 10, 15, 20 hours a week or even 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 less than that. I don't know how you can manage it mm -hmm. because it helps you that because it makes a difference when you put those sort of roles in the resumes when you, when you and, and, and it will make difference when you're facing the interviews and things like that. And communication is very critical um, tool and that that will help you to land in the better way. Like we discussed um, how uh, our interpersonal skill is really important. 
how we should uh, develop with our ongoing jobs, how we can improve ourselves by learning a few things online as well. What would you like to say to those students who just uh, use the platform such as professional year just to collect points for permanent residency? Uh, they they are not passionate about uh, working as an accountant. They are not passionate about the career. They just do it just for the points. What would you like to say to those students? So that's a very good question, honestly. Um, when we say professional year, I know it's um, more of dominated by getting a five points for yeah. permanent residency and things like that. But think in this way: if you want to pursue a career in accounting. You're going to some uh, accounting environment, uh, or you're working under some finance professionals. That is a great opportunity for yourself to learn those skills, enhance yourself, prove you are a right candidate. So uh, if it's bigger size companies and if they are going through the recruitment process and if you can convince that you are a person with right attitude and you are uh, keen to learn and grow and you can add value to that organization, they will hire you, first thing. Mm. Second thing, if they don't hire you instantly, they will keep you in mind and in the future if these roles comes in, you can apply or they may approach you on their own. You can ask for unpaid internship that's, as well. That's right. And third, thirdly, uh, what I think is in Australia, you need to have local referencing. So when you work with those people, uh, you can build that relationship and you can take that referencing as an asset. So it's not just collecting a five points, you're collecting those critical things that will save your career mm -hmm. in the long run. So, and as, as you mentioned earlier, um, internship doesn't need to be paid. For example, okay. if it's, if it's short-term pain, uh, would lead to the long-term gain, you should be doing it. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, when I, when lots of my cousins or younger brothers and sisters come and ask for me for these suggestions and things like that, I always say, it's okay to do another role to be, uh, to pay your bills and things like that after you finish the university. But do get find those intensive, have that local experience. Mm -hmm. And if you are in age of 25, 26, and you, if you don't do that now, mm -hmm. and if you run behind the money and you get in the rest of the money yep. and you cross past 30, yep. you'll never go back and do that, that again. That's, yeah, that's because the, after that, your responsibilities will go to another level. Probably you're gonna get married, you're gonna get, have a child, or you know, you can, all the sorts of things gonna prioritize and you will left behind on that perspective of the career yeah. so it depends how you're going to take it so it's a right age i know when you in university university fees will um um, dominate most of your, uh, you know, things. But yeah. once you get out of the university and that one, one and a half year, invest in your career, you know, and uh, we all need money and we will make money at some point. But just just sacrifice that five, six months to one year. Uh, for be visionary for, yeah. for your future. Exactly, exactly. And that will make a big difference in the career. Moving on. So in a business, they hire accountant to manage cash flows. So how important is it to budget household expenses and income and so what are the tools that we can use for budgeting effectively very lively question i would say um, one of the fascinating thing about being accountant is as i said it is one of the highly demand job and uh, it's related to money so when money comes in and you know, people take it in high regards and you, you've got importance but other thing in your lifeline you know in your day-to-day -day life um, it is very critical to have financial literacy. The term financial literacy I'm using. So financial literacy, like, you know, even my parents has financial literacy, but as a professional, when you bring that literacy, it will make difference in your life. So it's all about uh, how you manage the funds, how you budget and things like that. So uh, there are multiple things we can talk about this starting from the small business and large businesses and large projects my expertise is more of working in the big projects okay. you know engineering i work for engineering firms okay. and, and they deal with the mega projects like building uh, motorways okay. stadiums and then things like that which are like millions to billions dollar project and, and these, these things are very critical but essence is again those financial disciplines that you can bring your personal life for example if i get paid paid once a month, how I'm going to manage my that throughout the year and then, you know, paying mortgages to bills to, you know, and saving that for the future and, and investing that to other portfolios, for example, sales, investment properties and things like that. So a few uh, things that I want to share with you is uh, firstly, you need to understand 
gas inflow and gas outflow. These are the two critical things. Mm -hmm. So what is gas inflow means what is coming into your bank account. Mm -hmm. Once you know what is coming into your bank account, you can plan for the foreseeable situation. You can say up to, you know, Obviously, if you are in a job or if you're doing a big business, you know, mm -hmm. job is quite easy because you have got consistent cash flow, the mm -hmm. money coming in. But if you're talking about the business, there could be risks associated and there could be ups and downs mm -hmm. and it's quite challenging there. But, mm -hmm. um, but it's very important to understand what your cash flow trend is. Mm -hmm. And depending upon your cash inflow, you're going to be managing your cash outflow. Mm -hmm. So you try to intend your, you're in the cash surplus situation. Mm -hmm. um, that means your cash inflow is always in a better situation than your cash outflow. Mm -hmm. So if you have that tracking or tracing, you don't need to be an expert to do that. Even, you know, simple calculations, um, simple records, and, you know, having that simple financial literacy on your day today stuff will help to maintain those things and that will give you some sort of financial independence and I'm going to use that word financial independence it is very important for your mental well-being mm -hmm. as well as to be confident in your life mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter how much money you make it's all about how much you save at the end of the day there yeah. are people who are making multiple thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. and not being able to save and I've seen there are people who make reasonable wages and salaries a year and even they are being able to save that money and and, and do things what they want to do it is very important to manage those portfolios in terms of cash inflow outflow um, and it's, it's it's good if your gas outflow is exaggerating or it's uh, spiking up you can always cut off in the non-essential stuffs and things like that and maintain that financial discipline for the better career and better future and moving on to another question so what are the future and ongoing plans of nrn in australia in regards and benefits of uh, international nepali students nrna has been doing lots of things in the diaspora community and undoubtedly Nepali students has benefited a lot. I know there are high expectations out there but what I what I can say is being a treasurer of NRNA and one of the director of NRNA, NRNA is a voluntary organization mm -hmm. with limited resources and whatever it's doing is it's totally in the capacity of uh, you know uh, volunteers out there. So even Expectations are high. It may not be possible to meet all those expectations, but what I can uh, tell you firmly is we have been doing uh, what we can do from our level. And I, I, I agree there are a few things we need to improve, such as improving um, our lobbying power with the mainstream government in both the state and federal levels and then get those uh, benefits out to the international student. That's something we need to progress and we need to do better in the, uh, in the future. But um, what I want to say is during this uh, unprecedented time in COVID and things mm -hmm. like that, uh, and in Australia has been very innovative. It has taken the initiative even before the state and federal governments start helping out the international students there. We, uh, we came with a project where uh, we were helping out the grocery packages to the mm -hmm. international students who were being affected by pandemic. And uh, with the coach, the, the assistance projects has evolved accordingly. And later we, we developed uh, mm -hmm. uh, webinars and seminars um, highlighting what are the available resources from state and federal government that international students can access. And we, we tend to guide them so that they can access to those resources and, and you know, uh, get them intact during these difficult times. Mm -hmm. uh, for the future, we're coming back to the equation. Uh, in the future, um, we have recently decided to uh, develop advisory council of the international students we have asked uh, expression of interest uh, from Australian st international students especially from Nepali origin mm -hmm. so if they can go and fill that form we'll form a council so it is solely developed to take the recommendations and mm -hmm. you know suggestions from students what we can do uh, better mm -hmm. for them in moving forward beside that mm -hmm. uh, there are a few projects in the pipeline such as employable mm -hmm. enhancing employability skills simply like giving a white card or mm -hmm. barista training Mm -hmm. um, having another series of webinars and uh, sessions of uh, um, how to access the governments and mainstreams, uh, incentives and benefits, mm -hmm. and uh, 
there are sessions run by youth forums and different state coordination councils and how to improve the resumes and CVs, you know, and how to enhance the interview skills so that you can uh, do well in the interviews and secure in the job. So all these sort of things. And beside that, students have been hard hit in different aspects in this uh, in this international um, market because they have been away from the home. Uh, they are young. Um, you know, they are missing family. There is emotional challenges there. They are struggling with the studies and then work-related challenges. So, you know, there are lots of challenges there. And I've, I've seen being a treasurer, I've been in one of the critical role where I release the funds for funerals and repatriation mm -hmm. of international mm -hmm. students who is committing suicide due to mental health issues and things like that. So we are coming up with some of the mental health uh, sessions mm -hmm. and, uh, and we are looking this closely and we are working hard to close that gap. I know it's a huge job and it's not just possible mm -hmm. from NRNA, but we are trying to do what we can, but mm -hmm. uh, we need support from the broader community, people like yourself and, mm -hmm. you know, and all the stakeholders out there Mm -hmm. We all, if we stand together and then have that optimism and positivity out there, and if we spread the masses of love and positivity, we can do better in the future. How can a volunteer work motivate uh, one individual? Well, that's a very good question again. Honestly speaking, uh, what I think is we are human beings. Yeah. We are superior creatures than any other millions of creatures out there. There are millions of species out there. And, and the beautiful thing about being human is we just don't think about ourselves and our family. We think about people out there. Mm -hmm. And it is sort of a satisfaction when we go out there and assist someone. When you bring a smile in the face of someone, mm -hmm. it, it does help you, uh, you know, in, 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 in a in different way. It brings a positivity out there. And for me, um, is being a volunteer and, and, you know, getting involved in the community work, that gives me a different sort of satisfaction and and I think uh, it is my responsibility too. Like mm -hmm. it's, we say we are a global citizen. So um, citizen is a word that derives from Greek. Mm -hmm. Okay. Originally when that word derived, citizen means not everyone can be a citizen. Citizen are those people who can do something well for the community or mm -hmm. someone else. That's why that citizen word coin and it has been used and in, in modern English okay so as a citizen it's our responsibility to think about obviously ourselves our family but our community and the people out there in your experience so what are the challenges do you think is faced by like international students here in Australia if I have to talk about the challenges for international students I can broadly categorize into three categories mm -hmm. firstly coming as an international student they have study related challenges mm -hmm. Second is work-related challenge, and mm -hmm. third is generic things, you know, life-related challenge. Mm -hmm. So work-related challenge is from where we come in and the um, study pattern here, the study and, you know, curriculum and the, the academic system here is quite different than where we, for example, if you come from a country like Nepal and curriculum here, it's, a, it's quite different and when coming as a new student without all this information, it could be a quite shocking, you know, mm -hmm. doing, um, doing assignments, if you don't know about referencing, if you don't know about plagiarism. Mm -hmm. And I've seen few people being struggled there mm -hmm. and I've been instructor mm -hmm. um, and I've been teaching students uh, from the last couple of years and uh, I can see the challenges with answering those questions. They're not, they're very well with uh, examinations, you know, they've been trained with those things. But when mm -hmm. it comes to research-based study, uh, they're not quite as strong in those sort of things. And, mm -hmm. and and that has caused some sort of, you know, emotional dilemma, even mm -hmm. in the mental mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the challenges, uh, I would say. And to get over the challenge, that study-related challenge, what I suggest to students out there is spend more time with your tutors and lecturers, you know, do not hesitate. Lots of students are hesitant to go and approach their mm -hmm. lecture and tutors, express themselves. They are there for you. And there are uh, universities and your colleges have the student support center. Go and mm -hmm. talk to them, you know, mm -hmm. and, and don't get hesitant with the language barrier. Language is just a language, you know. Mm -hmm. um, with the course of time, even you do mistakes, you know, if you're not confident, but if you keep you know, communicating, if you uh, keep expressing yourself, you will eventually develop. Uh, you know, mm. I know English is a second language for all of us and, and, and it, it, it could be quite challenging, but it's, it's part of learning too. So do not get hesitant on that part and keep moving on. That's what I want to suggest. And second thing is 
obviously work-related challenge I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as I said, coming from the non-English speaking background, not working in this sort of environment and just coming, it's very hard to land on the job, even as international student. I'm not talking about a professional job, I'm even talking about a first job in Australia, you know, going in the cafes or getting, getting those roles. So again, I ask you uh, to get connected with your networks, mm -hmm. referrals is the best way to get first job, honestly mm -hmm. speaking. If you do not land on the referrals, it's quite, it, it can be quite hectic and can be quite frustrating. But having said that, do not, um, do not be pessimistic. Um, I know the market right now is not great, but uh, Australian economy will bounce back and you will be, you'll be fine. But my uh, response for you guys is if you are working uh, and I've seen lots of people being you know, discriminated or being exploited in the job it's mm -hmm. just because you are from a non-english speaking background or you're not uh, raising your voice in the rightly fashion mm -hmm. please do not do that mm -hmm. in australia if you're working legally mm -hmm. uh, there is a fair work mm -hmm. you know and you can report you, you, there is a decent pay rate and you had there are decent incentives and privileges that are shed in those fair work terms and conditions that your employer need to follow and, and don't worry about visas and things like that. It is your right. So if you're being exploited in the job, please come forward. Go to your seniors, brothers, sisters who have been here for a longer time and ask for suggestions. I'm being treated unfairly. What should I do? And then and, and we, can, we can guide you to the right direction. Do not stay quiet and do not, you know, that will affect your mental health. And that's not fair for you. That's another suggestion I would want to say to you guys. And thirdly is um, getting used to with these uh, environment and you know getting familiarized and accustomed with the Australian environment uh, and and uh, other challenges I've seen is as an international student accommodation and coming here you need to share with the people who you've never seen in the past and you know and there's a uh, you are staying with your parents everything is there for granted you mm -hmm. don't do anything and mm -hmm. all of a sudden world is upside down you need to uh, start doing things from the scratches mm -hmm. you share with the person you have never seen mm -hmm. and never known and you know there is uh, some sort of conflict there and all those dilemmas you know and then and it could be really quite challenging emotionally and I can completely understand because I've come from where you, you guys are so what I say is again be patient be polite be kind and that will change things and that is a part of being a successful person I believe and stay connected with your parents you know share things with your seniors if you don't know ask people who knows about do not assume mm -hmm. the major problem I've seen is people are hesitant to get the information mm -hmm. good hesitant to get the right source of the information and they assume themselves and try to act and mm -hmm. sometimes the assumption is wrong and they are going to the complete right direction it's quite late to rectify that so please do not do that so mm -hmm. that's what are my suggestions for the students out there in this uh, global crippling pandemic the students are stuck back home. So what would you like to suggest them? The students out there in Nepal, and I've, I've, I've got lots of calls too from myself. My relatives are also waiting to come here. I know your, your visa has been granted mm -hmm. and you, you've been stuck there. Um, even your visa has been granted and things like that. I don't think Australian government policy is quite there to bring you guys here. So mm -hmm. during this time, again, um, be patient. Use this time um, to study something, to enhance your skills, you know, a possible uh, liaise with your education provider and it, check them if they can offer the online courses and try to involve in the online courses and when the border opens you can fly back. Otherwise, this is a critical time. Stay safe, be positive. Yeah, and this is also a part of human life. Uh, how to be adaptable with the critical situation and 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 keep moving on. It, it is also sort of a learning. It's not you know we go to the university and get an academic degree. That's that's not only a learning. Surviving these tough situations, making yourself mentally strong, you know, motivating people out there, smiling in the adversities, giving a positive thoughts, and moving on is also learning and that 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 is also uh, an achievement in your life and that's how it should be you said it would be really inspiring really informative to all the students and i think they are going through some, going through the tough times and these are very inspiring words that you deliver so when we come to the end of our program would you like to contribute any few words to our viewers that which are currently watching i know this is an unprecedented time firstly please follow the government authorities um instructions stay safe during this pandemic uh, we are doing well uh, but we need to follow those instructions since 
uh, until we get the vaccine and the things get normalized, we all need to be disciplined and care about each other. If you are in the privileged situation, if you are in a better situation, please do look after people who are needy ones there and all the international students out there. It is not an easy situation. It is a difficult situation, but be positive. Time will change. There's always um, golden sunshine after the sunset so we need to be positive and move on and again all the viewers thank you for your time for listening to me and and thank you Anusha for this opportunity thank you to your entire team thank you so much we really appreciate you sharing your time in your busy schedule and we really wish you all the best for your future endeavors thank, thank you, you so much. much thank you so on that note i would like to end today's episode we'll be back next week please stay updated in our average news social media pages subscribe to our average news youtube channel Stay influenced, take care, and above all, please stay safe. Thank you.